tired of seeing this annoying activate Windows message? Then if so, today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered. For as little as $14 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get activated today. Works for Windows 11 Pro too. Links in the description below. So I have a friend who works at a computer store here on the Gold Coast, and he got word of someone coming in wanting to sell their gaming PC set up before they flew back to China and they just had to get rid of it almost the same day. It was urgent. And they said to me, Brian, you know, you like cleaning stuff up. You don't mind uh, dirty PCs. We know this. Uh, would you come and pick this up? They want a thousand dollars for it. And I asked straight away, what's inside this PC? What's the specs of this thing? And then they said, well, it's got an RTX 3070. And I just stopped there. As soon as I heard 3070, a thousand Aussie dollars, I was uh, just, yep, I'm coming to pick it up. Doesn't even matter what the rest of the stuff in this build is, I'm getting this thing. So immediately went down there and upon seeing it, I was actually very surprised with this build in that it was so dirty for an RTX 3070 PC. In fact, I think what had happened was the person has been using this, actually this whole setup for a lot longer than one year. But when the 3070 came out, they probably just upgraded the GPU alone. However, we can see here that we're going to have to clean this thing up, but we're going to have to go through it in different stages where, first of all, we're going to start off with the peripherals here where we've got a Cherry MX keyboard. And if we look at the keycaps closely, we can just see there's so much gunk in between all these keycaps. And then we've even got things like speakers here from Creative. We've got headphones. And we are going to give, and this is the first time on the channel, where we are going to be giving the peripherals an ultrasonic cleaning. And we're going to see how it turns out. They also ended up getting an Aegon 27-inch high refresh rate monitor. And here is the main rig here, which I believe they said the specs had an i7-6700, 16 gigabytes of RAM. And this is a Cougar case with a Cougar 360 mil rad. Now, I thought about uh, doing this case up and putting all the components back in, but upon seeing the front panel and the fact that it's one of the weirdest designs for a case I've ever seen, where the pretty much the whole front is just blocked off, but it, it's got tempered glass on it. And I thought to myself, maybe I could just mod the plastic inside this and make the glass transparent and then add some RGB and bling it up a little bit. But that's not going to be the case with this build right here. Not only is the case really dirty with some really sort of like odd bits, it's as almost as if someone was, again, you can see when you look closely at some of this uh, debris inside the plastic here, you can see that it's just got this sticky kind of dirt and that usually comes from a smoking environment. So. What we're gonna do is since this case has no kind of way of getting the glass to be transparent because they've actually got the uh, screw attachments on the glass itself here. So there's the glass there and there's the screw attachments which then comes to the plastic. We're not gonna be able to cut that out too. So I'm thinking I will change cases and then add that to the office PC stack pile that I've got here. I've actually got to get onto fixing up all these office PCs. So what I do is when I usually replace a case that's not so desirable for a case that is desirable, I then leave this uh, case that I'm not using and I'll turn that into an office PC in the future. Though that said, let's begin this massive before and after journey of the RTX 3070 $1,000 gaming setup. So now that we've just pulled apart this build, you may notice that there's a few different changes here on the bench. And the first being the 7700K in the B250 motherboard. I kind of feel like it's a bit underpowered for an RTX 3070. An RTX 3060, sure, but when it comes to a 3070, I'm pretty sure people looking for a system would want more than four cores, eight threads. I mean, personally, I would want at least six cores, 12 threads. And so that's why I'm going with a 10600K and this Z490 motherboard because they can be had for a really good price since a lot of people want the 11th gen or the Ryzen 5000 series. It'll still make for a great combo with the RTX 3070. Now, we've got 32 gigabytes of RAM here that I got on a used deal. This is the Trident Z stuff. Really fast, also adds some bling to the build and then we're going to be reusing this 360 mil rad in a different case but there's going to be a catch and that is we're going to be changing the fans to rgb fans to get that bling in now the only part that we're going to be doing 
with this build in terms of ultrasonic cleaning is this power supply right here where it's got some really really dirty grime on the fan and that's probably also stuck to some of the components inside the power supply now we actually don't need to pull this power supply completely apart since down the bottom there's actually no plastic shielding so this will be very easy not only to clean but also to dry off with the data vac after we're done cleaning with that however you're probably thinking brian you're adding cost to the build here this is not going to fly well i mean that's going to take away from the budget but not necessarily and that's because we got a gtx 1080 i picked up another one of these earlier in the month and i got this for 400 aussie dollars from a supplier i knew i actually had to outbid because they wanted 350 for it someone was lined up for 350 and then i said look i'll give you 400 for it and they said sure so i was the highest bidder on this gtx 1080 then we've got here a 7700k and 16 gigabytes of ram and i feel like that's a really good balance with the gtx 1080 setups so when it comes to gaming pcs i always like to mix and match parts regardless of if it's going to add budget to one build versus another but that said this is going to make this next build that i put together very cheap So now we've got the setup is ready to go in terms of peripherals. We've got the keyboard, the mouse, the speakers, they're all cleaned. Unfortunately for the headphones, I do have to order in some new uh, pads for them because they came out of the ultra cleaner and the mold is just, it really sort of just seeps in and integrates itself with the part. And unfortunately too, with the keyboard, the mold had seeped into the keyboard so much that I had to uh, just throw away the metal bracket. So that's just been thrown away completely. And I've never seen anything like that where mold seeped into like the, the metal and it's just, I don't know. Anyway, the keyboard was probably the part that we spent the most amount of time on cleaning with all the key caps, putting it back together. And I think it's come out okay. I mean, hopefully the mouse and the keyboard work, but as for the case with the mouse and the keyboard, I'm just willing to take that gamble with cleaning these through the ultrasonic cleaner, even though I don't recommend cleaning peripherals because if they've got onboard memory on it with electronics, you can short circuit the part and they don't work. But in this case, I've made an exception because I honestly don't mind losing these parts because the state that they were in before they went in the ultrasonic cleaner was unacceptable. They were just filthy, mold. And it's just like seeping in mold as well. I have to get rid of that because I wouldn't use this personally. I wouldn't let anyone I know or anyone on this planet for that matter use this keyboard and mouse with that amount of mold on it. It was just disgusting. So I had to get rid of all that mold, make it hygienic, make it clean. You know, tech yes loving, you guys know the drill. And I mean, hopefully when we boot this whole PC up, I gotta leave this thing for like the final surprise and just see if it works. 
Anyhow, with all that cleaned up and all these parts here ready, as well as our power supply, which we also put through the ultrasonic cleaner, it's time to now build up this whole PC with a different motherboard and CPU and RAM and also a different case. My oh my, the yes man gets very lucky in that everything is now working perfectly. Even the mouse, the mouse that we put through the ultrasonic cleaner, that ended up working out okay. But I will say out of all the components you're going to put through uh, water, I would not recommend, and I'll say this again, I do not recommend putting a mouse through the uh, dishwasher or an ultrasonic cleaner because I've in like five years ago, I was cleaning a mouse and it broke. So even after I cleaned it and got all the liquid off it, it was one of those parts that sort of failed during the process. So don't recommend doing it. But in this case, I had nothing to lose. The keyboard, this was one of, it's probably the same thing with a keyboard. I'd be very cautious putting a keyboard through water. But again, with these two components, nothing to lose. They were just ridiculously dirty in how much like, I'm not even gonna go into the details. I guess you guys can see it through the B-roll, but in terms of the keyboard, it all seeped in underneath as well. And so cleaning this thing out for me was the only choice. But after that, the monitor, that ended up working really well, 144 Hertz, 1440p, and it also has the FreeSync, but the FreeSync was working a little bit weird, especially with the RTX 3070. So I had to turn it off because it was kind of flickering. And there was also one more problem, even though the whole build ended up turning out really well in terms of we got 32 gigabytes of RAM, we got that up to 3,800 megahertz, and we also got the CPU up to 4.9 gigahertz. The temperatures of the GPU did worry me a little bit in that the Ventus, I didn't overclock it or anything like that, but the temperatures were pretty much sitting at 80 degrees pretty much all the time while I was gaming. And to me, that's sort of, it's a little bit worrisome when you've got this brand new card and it's running at 80 degrees when your ambient temperatures aren't that hot to begin with. So this card in summer, I would imagine, would only fare worse. So if you do get an RTX 3070 Ventus, because I haven't checked one of these Ventus models out yet, if you do get one of these Ventus models, I'd either recommend two things or both, and that is upping the fan speeds to make it run cooler or uh, undervolting it, and that'll just make it use less power so the cooler can do a better job of effectively keeping the GPU at a cooler temperature. So in terms of this build now, we did put some extra money into it with the 10600K as well as the Z490 motherboard, but I feel those two components work really well, especially with that 360 mil rad that we kind of did have to modify a little bit to get working in this case, but we've got a full fledged bling balanced out PC where I feel like the 7700K is a bit underpowered for matching with an RTX 3070. So I think six cores, 12 threads, especially when you can overclock it to near five gigahertz, it's gonna make a perfect balance. And we tested this in Apex Legends, which I feel is a little bit more heavier in terms of its system requirements and what it needs from hardware than say games like Valorant or CSGO or Dota 2. And so I found that this game does like to have eight threads or more. I think it's actually optimized for six cores, 12 threads. So when we did the benchmark numbers at 1080p, uh, with the RTX 3070, even max settings at 1080p, we were getting over 200 FPS most of the time. 
And then at 1440p, for some reason when I tested with this monitor at 1440p, it decided to cap the game at 144 FPS. So we're pretty much hitting that FPS cap all the time at 1440p. Really good experience. So when I go to flip this, the person who gets this is gonna have a quality PC. Though I will flip it with a keyboard like the Strix RGB just to go with the RGB theme. Even though the Cherry MX keyboard is a really good keyboard, I just, it's got a few little scuffs on it and stuff that I feel would be better with like a mid-range setup and same with the mouse. So I'll put some other components in. Though another really good thing about this build, even though we've put more money into it, we do have that 7700K and 16 gigabytes of RAM in a cooler and we can use that for another build in the future. And I just thought all the other components in this build would match up perfectly with a 10600K. So do let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this setup. And I mean, it's one of those things that doesn't come along often, but when it comes along, you clean it up and you enjoy it. And if you do have a keen eye and you sort of are quick, then you can get the deals. Even though I will admit it's getting a lot harder in 2021, crypto miners are really pretty, pretty much when we think about it in the grand scheme of things, crypto miners are just making the market so much smaller in that the terms of choice that we have, there's not a whole lot to pick from because as soon as something comes in stock at a decent price, you guessed it, the crypto miners go and pick it up. So that's the state of, especially when it comes to graphics cards, the state of PC gaming right now is in dire straits. And I'm praying, I'm sitting here praying months later, still praying for that crash. So you, can, you guys, if you're out there with me, just pray with me. We got this. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions or comments about this setup right here, and if you thought you'd change some things or if you thought I did a pretty good job, be sure to hit that like button. And also the headphones, I will be ordering some replacement headphone pads for them and then they'll pretty much be like brand new after that too. So everything's getting reused here. I was really happy with the end result. Everything came out okay. And that case, I will use that in the future for an office PC. But one more interesting thing that I found with this build was that the Cougar controller can control the RGB lights on the case. So I guess it goes to show that all this stuff pretty much comes from the same factory and Cougar just slapped their logo on it and voila, they've got their own unique RGB controller. But I guess it's good because I've got all the RGB under control from one remote. Anyhow, we got the question of the day here, which comes from Baxtinen. <laughs> I do, do apologize, I probably butchered that one. But we got here, what's the best GPU you can pair with a i7-4790? I'm currently using a 1070 Ti paired with a Quadro P1000 for SolidWorks. So that's pretty much for dedicated gaming, four cores, eight threads, as we saw here with the four core, eight thread, 7700K, even though it's better than the i7-4790, uh, it's still not, I don't feel adequate for a RTX 3070. So basically in terms of what you got now, 1070 Ti, very close in performance to a 1080. I just stick with that, very good balance there. Hope that answers that question and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech, yes, content. Be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Later.